OK, more on our national self-harm when it comes to energy. You've heard me make the case for nuclear, of course, dozens of times on this program with lots of different speakers. The environmental footprint, of course, is smaller than renewables. It's reliable and it's dispatchable. And the nuclear plants actually last 75 years or more. Yet governments of both stripes in this country are zealots when it comes to expensive and unreliable renewables, leaving us with a fragile power grid at risk of more blackouts. Mark Nelson is a Chicago-based nuclear engineer. He's in Sydney for a conference with Replanet Australia. I asked him whether it's even possible for developed economies like ours to get to net zero without nuclear. Well, saying rich, probably not. Um, if any country can do it, maybe it's Australia. And I guess I really appreciate your sacrifice in this fairly dangerous experiment that you're undertaking. Because I, well, I don't have to suffer the consequences. <laughs> That's exactly the point. We are conducting an experiment here uh, to try and go 100% to a uh, renewables plus storage model, uh, even though we've got such a diverse uh, population spread across such a huge landmass. Uh, no one's done this before, have they? No. I mean, in some ways, you could argue the landmass helps you out because you can spread out more renewables over bigger areas. So, for example, I don't have any of this sort of joking optimism when I visit very small, skinny countries in the far, far north of, say, Europe, where the solar doesn't even barely work on the best of days, at least in Australia, I'd say there's a fighting chance. Unfortunately, what that means is you could get really deep into the experiment before you realize it isn't going to work. And your debates around your final coal plants in many ways, it's like, uh, I don't want to say the Waterloo of the various energy visions, but it's, uh, it feels like it has that stakes to me. Your final coal plants looking at ending of life, but cannot die. It's like uh, they're cursed or something. Well, there are two aspects I want to take up on that. One is when it comes to the, the fact that we're a big continent and spread out, yeah, we have a lot of land uh, and coastline for wind turbines and for solar farms and the like, but it means we then have to transmit the electricity vast distances to get to our large cities. And that alienates a lot of land and creates all sorts of additional environmental problems. Yeah, I mean, you block one or two key transmission lines and that's kind of potentially the end of your energy vision. So... Part of the experiment here is what political forces will be brought to bear against recalcitrant landowners who are blocking the, you might say, the final stage of the experiment. Doesn't mean that it'll work just because you build the transmission lines, just that it almost certainly won't if you can't build key transmission lines. So fascinating thing for me to watch. Uh, you know, I'm based in Chicago where we have electricity at a fraction of your price, almost completely decarbonized just from a few local nuclear plants. So I really have the best possible position to not be affected by any bad results from your experiment and getting to watch what unfolds because i'm fine we're fine we already have our paid off nuclear plants 80 percent nuclear and we don't need any more transmission lines we don't need anything so watching you guys attempt to show the world whether it does or doesn't work it's kind of exciting for an outsider it's not very exciting for us. We not so long ago had some of the cheapest electricity in the world and the most reliable energy in the world. We've surrendered that advantage now. We have expensive, unreliable energy. If we had to change the economic system to just allow people to buy the energy that they wanted, the reliable energy they wanted, is nuclear affordable? Because about the only argument used against it anymore in Australia, it's not the old scares about waste or the proliferation of weapons. It's about cost. Does it stack up when it comes to the cost? You've actually hit on one of the most interesting avenues being explored by companies and even countries around the world. Heavy energy consumers coming together to pre-buy, to sign up to subscriptions for shares of electricity from nuclear plants so the nuclear plants don't have to go out to market and guess whether anyone will buy it. You know, people around the world are buying electricity credits from renewables. It's all kind of a fake scam, but they were doing it. The lawyer said it was okay. It seemed to work for a while. There was no reason that people in countries with both nuclear plants and electricity markets, which is a bunch of the rich countries on earth, have those two things. They could have just bought from nuclear plants. They chose not to, often for like corporate ESG, reasons. Well, let me put you on the spot then. You've teased us about this uh, huge and costly experiment we're conducting on behalf of the rest of the world. If you were running Australia's energy system, would you continue with that experiment and risk that the whole thing fails? 
or would you switch in, to some degree at least to some nuclear energy to underpin our energy grid? Now, you really put me on the spot, as you said. You've taken me from a bemused outsider who doesn't have to survive your experiment but gets to learn from it to one who's now having to pretend to be responsible. Heavy burden, but let me see. One of the first things I would do is level with people. If you start nuclear today, to get up to speed to be a proper, fully developed country that has nuclear plants, it's going to take a while. You need interim programs to make sure that producers of electricity will get paid, consumers of electricity will have access to power plants. If that's higher carbon in the meantime, that is the price of getting it wrong for so many decades. Again, your, your experiment is still ongoing. Maybe wind and solar will work. I certainly have very smart friends that think so, and I respect their opinions on the matter, even if I disagree. I would then, after leveling with the Australian people, that it's going to be a bit of a rough decade. There are going to be stabilization programs. Figure out where ongoing wind and solar projects that could be balanced with, say, natural gas and storage. On the nuclear program, you've got to be serious. People use this dumb SMR. What's that? What the hell is an SMR? I'm sorry, I'm a nuclear engineer and I hate this phrase SMR. It's a, an industry buzzword to like, try to pretend that you can trick people into doing nuclear and it's not the most powerful energy source in the world. It is. Nuclear requires a big, honest discussion. It may be that when you have that honest discussion, the Australian people are up for a large traditional reactor that we know works. And it will take time to both have the conversation, so get it started now while you're stabilizing the former electricity market and then get a proper consulting program in place for what a nuclear program would look like with the most serious people in the world who have already constructed nuclear programs and get working on the ban straight away because honestly look i work with industry around the world they're not really paying that much attention to australia because they don't take you guys seriously because you have the ban so you guys have to take yourself seriously get that ban gone get ready to have a patient conversation about the length of time needed to get a proper nuclear energy program in place and stabilize your your grid plants and admit that it's going to be a big sacrifice to even get that 10 or 15 year gap patched up with your retiring plants before the nuclear can come online. It is one hell of a mess, as you point out, but we've got to get cracking and fix it so much for it. Thank you so much for your insights, Mark. I appreciate it. You bet, Chris.